Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. This is part two of the electronics uh, for the big CNC conversion. And uh, last time I was completely stupid and broke this Ethernet smooth stepper. So by now uh, the new one has arrived and it should work well. So I'm gonna install that and install some other things that have arrived by now. And hopefully we should be able to have the machine actually running very, very soon. Before we get into the video, I'm gonna give a big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring it. They make super high quality PCBs for your DIY project that start at just $5 for 10 pieces, which is super amazing. They are double sided uh, with all the goodies that you could want. And if you wanna get more involved, you can also have more complex PCBs. You can have flexible PCBs. You can have them assembled right at PCBWay. So make sure to go check out PCBWay.com for more information. All right, so I went ahead and removed the breakout board from the electronics box since uh, when I plugged everything in, uh, connected the 24 volts to the 24 volt uh, connector, then some of the lights started to light up, but the uh, smooth stepper didn't get enough power. Now, when measuring, uh, I realized that the five volts that uh, should be going to the smooth stepper were only about 1.3 volts. Uh, but when measuring the five volt output here, I was measuring five volts. So I took it out and did some further investigation. So it turns out that this breakout board actually has multiple step down converters. There is this small chip here, which is a uh, one uh, five volt step down converter. And that is the one that is supplying five volts uh, to here and maybe uh, some other places. Um, but then also this comp uh, component here is also uh, like quite a fancy uh, five volt step down converter. And that is supplying uh, all these uh, outputs here and these all these chips here with five volts. Um, I haven't figured out yet if it also is responsible for uh, the smooth stepper, but I think it is. Uh, now, when measuring here on the output, I was measuring 1.3 volts instead of 5 volts. And that's why I assumed that it's probably uh, this component that blew when I tried to send in uh, 24 volts uh, on the 5 volt rail here. But here on the back, uh, there is actually a little uh, solder pad that you can uh, disconnect, uh, kind of like a jumper, and to uh, not use uh, this 5 volt regulator if you wanted to use an external 5 volt uh, source. And after disconnecting this and measuring here again uh, at the pin of this 5 volt regulator, I was measuring 5 volts now. So it is not the 5 volt regulator that is to blame but something must be drawing so much power that uh, the 5 volt uh, that it was like pulling the voltage down. Now, when touching the five volt converter here, uh, it was also getting quite hot. So something uh, mu must be blown out. Uh, but now uh, the challenge is to first figure out which components all uh, sh share this five volt rail and then figure out which one of these uh, components uh, broke and is therefore uh, causing all these problems. Now, this would be quite easy if there was something like a schematic available for this board. But all I can find is like the layout and all of that, but that doesn't really help me. So I guess I'm just uh, measuring a whole bunch of stuff and trying to figure this out. All right, so I managed to actually find out uh, what the problem was. There was one uh, tiny little component here, uh, which is like a special kind of diode. A TVS diode. Now I'm not even gonna try to explain what it does since I haven't completely understood it myself. But uh, what it basically does is some sort of like protection diode uh, that should uh, like smooth out, like protect uh, some components if there's like voltage or current spikes. And with a normal operation, it's just gonna like uh, become uh, conductive when there's like the spike that it wants to protect and let uh, let it like. Uh, flow through but uh, what happened now is that probably when I uh, brutally put in 24 volts into the 5 volt rail uh, this tried to protect it but uh, broke in the process and uh, now uh, it had a resistance of like 1.3 ohms which is really bad if it's connected between uh, 5 volts and uh, ground and that the way that I actually found this tiny little component here and 
I'm. <laughs> it's kind of uh, funny. Uh, I connected up uh, my bench power supply uh, to the five volt and rail and uh, ground rail, and just turned up the voltage until there was like just a little bit of power flowing, like half an amp to an amp, uh, which was at one or two volts or something like that. And then I went around the board, uh, touched all the components uh, to see what was getting hot. And first I did not find anything since this component is like kind of right next to this big component. So I probably didn't touch it. And then I t brushed against it and immediately burnt my finger. It hurt really bad, but uh, then I looked at the components here and first thought the uh, culprit was this like tiny resistor here. So I unsoldered this uh, and then measured it and 4.7 kilo ohms, that's perfectly normal. So it ha couldn't have been that. Uh, and then I figured out it was the small uh, diode here. Now, to appreciate how tiny these parts really are, I'm going to insert a picture here that I took with a super macro mode on my OnePlus 7T, which is becoming my new favorite mode for like debunking and stuff. Uh, this thing is so tiny. I'm like almost proud of myself that I managed to solder this resistor back in. So now uh, I have to either uh, find a replacement uh, for this part here or uh, maybe figure, find out if it is safe to operate the circuit without it. But I think that uh, with this removed, uh, now this board should work again like it was supposed to. All right, so now everything is hooked up and I started up uh, Mach 4 on the computer here and I should be able to actually move around all the axes. So as you can see, all the axes move around. Now there are some mechanical issues on some of the axes that I'm gonna tackle next, but it's a huge success to have everything working finally. Alright, so after this quite long uh, period of just wiring everything up, I now have pretty much everything hooked up. Now, the only thing that I have not done yet is the motor control is still manual. I have not uh, uh, built uh, the interface between the controller board and the VFD of the motor yet. Uh, that's still a project that I have to do in the future. But everything else is hooked up now. I have uh, the 60 volt power supply with a soft start. I have a 24 volt power supply for uh, for the uh, breakout board and a 12 volt power supply for the fans and the lighting uh, for the CNC itself. Uh, then I have hooked up, of course, the smooth stepper, the breakout board, all the motor drivers. I also hooked up. Uh, like a volt amp meter uh, to the spindle output so i can see the power uh, that it is drawing 
And for now, uh, the way I'm going to control the spindle is just with a switch and a potentiometer that is just dangling there. Um, that is one of the reasons why the wiring looks so messy. And the other reason is because there's just a lot of it. And uh, well, I just wanted to get done at some point. It still took me uh, like a lot of hours uh, to get all this wiring done. Now, safety-wise, uh, the whole cabinet is grounded, all the individual components uh, are grounded, the machine is grounded as well. Uh, I also have uh, fuses, a uh, 10-amp fuse for like all the motors, uh, the power supply is 15-amp, but like I intentionally designed it bigger uh, since these Chinese power supplies and you never want to run them at full power. And the spindle itself is uh, fused at 7.5 amps. Uh, that should be plenty since the motor is rated for 5.6 amps. Now, if you do the math, uh, 7.5 plus 10 amps, that makes 17.5 amps. But uh, I believe that the housebreakers are 10 amps. So uh, I, I can't overload both systems at the same time or the housebreaker will trip. But I, I don't expect that to happen anyways. Uh, like these fuses are more if just like a short or something. Now, since I will be drawing quite a lot of power, I don't want to uh, plug this machine into a bunch of power strips and extension cords. That's why I made quite a long uh, just uh, cable uh, going to it, which is really thick. And I'm going to be able to plug directly into the wall so that it has to travel through as little extension cords and in interfaces in between as possible. Alright, so I'm gonna uh, plug in the whole system now. Uh, now it should not do anything uh, right in the beginning uh, since the switch here is not yet turned on. And then once I press the green button here, it should uh, give power to everything in there. So let's just hope I don't blow any breakers, that we don't see any smoke and everything goes smoothly. So far so good. I have not blown any breakers yet and it is plugged in. I'm now gonna uh, turn on the switch and I'm gonna be careful not to touch anything inside since there are quite a few live connections uh, that are not uh, very covered up. All right, that sounds good. We can see a bunch of lights turned on. Uh, you can maybe hear uh, the fans uh, going. Those are the fa main fans for the enclosure, uh, the fans for the motor drivers and for the power supply. So there is some background noise, but it's not too loud. And once I close the enclosure, it's going to be even quieter. Now, the only thing that did not turn on that I was expecting to turn on is the meter here for the spindle but I don't quite remember where I hooked it up. Maybe it's only gonna turn on once I turn on the spindle. And since I do wanna test that, I'm gonna now uh, turn on the spindle and once again, be careful to not touch anything in there. I know it's not ideal to uh, go in there by hand and uh, turn switches on live connections, uh, but for now, that's uh, the only thing I can do. And I, I know where the live contacts are, so uh, I know where to be careful. And yes, it works. You can see on the display here, maybe you can't see uh, the RPM. It is turning, uh, the contactor activated uh, at the top and the spindle is actually turning. That is really good. Now the uh, power meter did not turn on, so I'm gonna have to investigate what's uh, going on with that. But this already is a big success. So I went ahead and installed some LEDs here and uh, these were sold to me as like a cold white but as you can quite clearly see uh, the color you see on uh, video is actually pretty representative of how it looks 
Uh, it's a little bit less purple, more blue in real life, but um, I guess I'm gonna have to replace those. Uh, but what does work uh, quite well is I ha can turn them on and off here from the touchscreen, which is uh, quite nice. Uh, it's the small things that count. Alright, so since the last clip where I talked, it has been uh, quite a long time, uh, almost a month. I've been on vacation in between and a lot of stuff has happened. But I'm now working on uh, getting the limit switches hooked up. So uh, these are the switches I'm using. They're inductive, uh, like at like 8mm distance. Uh, they sense the, that there is metal and then uh, they send the signal to the controller. Now, these are 5 volt uh, limit switches and my controller is running on 24 volts, so that does not really work that well. But uh, I hooked them up to 24 volts for now and uh, contrary to my previous overvolting experiments, uh, this actually does work, at least for now. Now, they do get kind of warm when they're activated and so they're probably gonna fail at some point. But I ordered the proper ones. For now though, you can see that the red LED here in the back is turning on and also in the controller board uh, for the limits which I get uh, here, the sensor. So I, you can also see this uh, little black bracket, I 3D printed that and it's gonna allow me to uh, mount the switch in a position that is uh, pretty easy uh, to use and I can loosen up that bolt here to adjust its position up and down and fine tune the position. So I quite clearly spoke uh, too soon. Um, shortly after I made that clip, uh, the fuse of the controller board uh, blew. Uh, now I'm not 100% sure yet if it was because of the limit switch, but I imagine it could be. So I replaced the fuse. I didn't. It, the original fuse is a 5 amp fuse. The closest I have is a 4 amp, uh, but should be fine. If anything, it's going to protect me even more. Um, while I have the board out again and everything disconnected again, I'm also going to uh, solder back in that diode that I blew up when I uh, blew up my uh, smooth stepper board. So I uh, got some replacement diodes. Uh, they were just as cheap to get like 50 of them as it was to get one. So I have like 50 of them. Now the replacement is a little bit bigger than the original just because like the original was super tiny. And you can't easily buy those. Uh, I have this one here. I sh it probably can just solder it in uh, like it is. Otherwise, I might have to like connect some wires to it, but should be fine. And now, it, as you uh, could see, of course, it's possibly possible to uh, use the system without uh, this protection diode. But mainly for like ESD shock and stuff like that, uh, this is a good way to protect the electronics. And since I already blew it up once. Um, possibly twice, uh, it probably is a good idea to install that uh, safety diode. So I mounted the board back in with the replaced fuse and the replaced diode. So let's turn it on and see if that's all that was uh, blew, blown up. Now I disconnected the limit switch uh, so that's not affecting it anymore. So far so good. And here we go. Okay, I guess I was lucky this time. All right, so I have the limit switch installed now. Uh, now I'm no, it's against my better judgment, but I'm just gonna uh, plug it in very shortly, then try to run the homing routine and to see if this actually works and then afterwards immediately unplug it again uh, so that I don't create any uh, new things. Now I measured out and uh, it looks like the limit switch went back to normal after it cooled down so I'm just gonna try it and I guess I'll have to replace the fuse again if I uh, mess up or something. So uh, this uh, should be fun. Well, um, maybe it's 
not all that fine again. Uh, <laughs> all right, so nothing really happened. Uh, just controller crashed and I immediately unplugged the limit switch and after I started everything back up, it works again. So I'm just not gonna bother with the limit switches until the proper ones arrived. I think I've learned my lesson by now. It only took like three times that everything blew up. Um, but uh, while I wanted to really show you the homing sequence in this video, that's gonna have to wait for, I guess, part three of the electronics series. As this is it for this video, if you liked it, please leave a like down below. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Also, go check out PCBWay, they make really a good product. So, thanks for watching and until next time.